Right, so after covering velocity layers in the previous video of this mini series, we're going to talk about the probability plugin in Ableton today and how to use it to incorporate those round robins into our drum racks to get a very, very realistic acoustic drum sound. So I want to show you what exactly round robins are. So I have a sample library here. As you can see, there are multiple velocity layers, which we talked about in the last video, V1, V2, V3, etc. But for each velocity layer, we also have three separate samples, round robin one, round robin two, and round robin three. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna create a scenario where hitting the same key on our MIDI controller will trigger those three different round robins alternatively, okay? Let's go back into Ableton. I'm gonna drag, of course, a drum rack onto an empty MIDI track. And we're going to work with a snare sample today. So I'm going to select D1. And of course, you might remember from the last video that uh, we cannot simply drag our sampler, which is called Simpler in Ableton, onto that pad because we need to load up not just one, but actually three samples, right? So we're going to need to drag an instrument rack onto D1 in this case. We're going by the general MIDI standard so that we can then drag our three instances of Simpler into that rack. And I'm also going to set Simpler to one-shot mode, so if you want to know why I'm doing that, it's the best one for drums. If you want a more in-depth explanation, again, watch the previous video I released on this topic. And then I'm going to copy it over three times, one time for each sample, right? So to simplify things, I'm going to work with just one velocity layer. And then in the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how to apply this to multiple velocity layers as well. So we're going to go with velocity one, the super quiet one. I'm going to drag my first round robin onto my first simpler. My second round robin onto my second simpler. And my third round robin onto my third simpler. Okay, so right now what we have is a scenario where if we hit D1 on our MIDI controller or our drum pads, it will trigger all three of these samples at the same time, which is not what we want, right? We want each key press to cycle through those three ROM robins so that the same sample is never repeated twice or three or four times in a row, right? We need that to get that realistic kind of acoustic drum sound as opposed to that robotic machine gun effect. So to do that, we're gonna use a plugin called Random, which is part of Ableton. And by the way, uh, you might have noticed I'm using the light version. So everything I'm explaining to you today and in the previous video as well can be done no matter which edition of Ableton you have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag Random right before our instrument rack. And uh, yeah, let's go through the parameters here. Number one, we have the chance parameter, which is kind of like a dry wet control. So with this set to 0%, we're not applying any randomization effect. We want to set this to 100% so that it will always be active. Then we have the choices parameter. Now choices is basically how many different pitch values this plugin can output for our incoming pitch. So we're feeding D1 into this, okay? And right now the choices parameter is set to 12. That means that random can output 12 different pitches every time we trigger it with that D1 pitch, okay? Now, 12 is a bit overkill. We just have three round robins, so we're gonna set this to three. Scale basically means how many semitones there are going to be in between those three choices we have. So with this set to one, our first choice is going to be the original pitch, so D1 in this case. Our second choice is going to be D1 plus one semitone, so D sharp one. And our third choice is going to be D sharp one plus yet another semitone, so E. If you wanted the three different pitches to be separated by an octave, for instance, you would set scale to 12 semitones, right? Now, um, the sign parameter tells random to move the pitch, you know, the possible choices, either upwards or downwards or both with regard to the original pitch. 
So by default, this is set to add, which means we're going to go upwards in terms of semitones. We can leave it at that. And finally, this is very important, the mode button here. Right now it's set to random. And random isn't really what we need because that means that the first sample could potentially be triggered multiple times in a row, giving us that dreaded machine gun effect. We actually want to set this to alt, which means that it's going to cycle between those three samples, never repeating any single one of them two, three or more times in a row. So random is set up correctly. We need to work on our instrument right now because if we switch over to the key pane here, we can see all possible uh, MIDI notes we can send into our instrument rack and therefore into our instances of Simpler. And as we can see here, every single one of them is set to react to every possible MIDI note. So random right now isn't really having any effect. So I'm going to change these values to limit them. I'm going to set the first one to C3. And you might wonder, why C3? You know, aren't we triggering our snare samples with D1 on our rack pad here? So what happens is the following. There is a so-called root note or bass note for every sampler. And in simpler, it happens to be C3. What that means is that when simpler receives a C3 note, it will play back the sample we loaded onto it without doing anything to the audio. So we will just play back the sample as is, right? But if we were to trigger Simpler with, say, C4, which is one octave above its root note, it would actually change the audio of that sample so as to transpose it upwards by an octave. And we don't want that to happen, right? So it's important that we always make sure that Simpler is triggered with a C3 note. Luckily for us, we don't even need to worry about it at this point because Ableton sets up drum racks automatically so that that conversion happens. So in other words, we are using D1 to trigger our snare sound, like we set up here on our drum rack pad. But then internally in the instrument rack, Ableton is converting that D1 node to C3 to properly trigger Simpler. And in fact, if I expand my drum rack track here, you will see these two note values right here. And it says the receiving note is D1, right? Because we put everything onto that pad. But the instrument rack will change D1 to C3, which is great because we can have all sorts of different sounds on all sorts of different pads. And the conversion is going to happen internally, right? So that is why I've set this to C3. But we are using a random plugin here, right? So on my second simpler, I'm going to set it so that it only reacts to C sharp 3, like that. And then my third simpler, I'm going to set to only react to D3. There we go. Now, have a look at the keys here as I cycle through the different simplers by simply pressing D1. And then have a look at this kind of black bar right here, which is going to light up whenever MIDI is received and processed by that simpler. So I'm going to press D1 here. And as you can see, every time I press D1, I'm actually generating a different MIDI note here. C3, C sharp 3, and D3. And that means that I'm going to trigger different simplers one at a time. Have a look here. First one, second one, and third one. Rinse and repeat. So that is great because it means that even if I program in a snare roll, it will never trigger the exact same sample every time, giving us that dreaded machine gun effect. But it will cycle through our different rom robins, our different variations to give us a very natural sound. Now, there is one last problem here. From what I was telling you before about Simpler having C3 as its root note, you might have realized that seeing as we are now triggering it with C sharp 3 and D3 also, it will actually transpose those samples. And you know, it might not be as noticeable when we're working with semitones, but let me change this to octaves, right? So I'm going to move this all the way up to C4. 
And our third instance of simper, I'm going to set to react to C5. And then I'm going to set the scale value here to 12, meaning that our three possible chances or pitch values are going to be separated by 12 semitones. So now have a look again at the keys up here and at the different simplers and also hear what it sounds like. I mean, clearly, Simpler is transposing our samples by a huge amount, by an octave every time. And we can really hear the difference there. Now, let me go back to what we had before. Again, it might not be as strong a change when working with just plus one, plus two semitones, but still, we don't want Simpler to alter our audio in any way, right? So there is fortunately a very simple solution to this, which is uh, our pitch plugin. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the second choice, the second simpler, slap a pitch plugin right before it and set it to minus one. And then on our second simpler, we're going to set the pitch plugin to minus two. So what that does is we are still benefiting from the random plugin changing the pitch of the incoming MIDI note so that we can trigger three different simplers alternatively. But then right before that altered MIDI note actually hits simpler, we're going to transpose it back so that it always is set to C3 which is, again, the root note of Simpler, so that we can make sure that it doesn't change the audio in any way. So we're taking the best of both worlds, really, here. Now, again, the important thing is to place the pitch plugin right before Simpler, not before the instrument rack, because then it would change the pitch value generated by the random plugin, and that would mess up all the triggering we have set up thus far. So that is it, really. And if you want to really really get the best possible acoustic drum sampling and you want to take advantage of this so the round robin setup plus velocity layers as well then it would be as easy as replacing these single instances of simpler with another instrument rack which you then would set up like i explained in the previous video so instead of having three simplers you would have three separate instrument racks and in the first instrument rack, you would put all of the velocity layers uh, relating to round robin one. So you would have round robin one, velocity one, uh, where is it? Velocity two, velocity three, four, etc. On your second rack, you would do the same, but for the second round robin. So round robin two, velocity one, two, three, etc. And you guessed it. On the third instrument rack, you would load the various velocity layers relating to the third round robin. So round robin three, velocity one, velocity two, velocity three, etc. You get the point. And if you want to know exactly how to set up your racks with multiple velocity layers, again, that's in my previous video. So you just need to combine the two. It's pretty easy, especially if you don't just watch this video, but actually follow along and open up a session in Ableton and try to recreate this scenario as well. So that is it, my friend. I hope this was helpful to you. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe. That being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.